Okay, pet parents, are you guys ready to talk about the dirty details of diabetes? Of course you are. Well, let's rock and roll, Biscotti. I'm gonna preface this video by saying this is gonna be the first video in a series I'm doing all about diabetes. Now, the purpose of this video is just to serve as a basic overview of some of the highlights of diabetes in a nutshell, and in future videos, we're gonna tackle the individual portions in more detail. So the disease diabetes actually has two versions of itself. The first one is called diabetes mellitus, and this involves insulin and glucose, and this is the kind of diabetes that we all refer to as diabetes. Then there's diabetes insipidus, which actually has nothing to do with insulin or glucose. You sit on a throne of lies. And before we could talk about diabetes mellitus a little bit more in detail, the first important thing you have to understand is the hormone insulin. So insulin is a hormone produced by the body, and more specifically, it's produced by what we call the beta cells in the pancreas, which is this cute little organ that's attached to the small intestines. As a hormone, insulin has a couple of different things that it does throughout the body, but the most important one is it regulates our blood sugar, and it does that by taking glucose or sugar that's in our blood system, and it drives it into the cells so that the cells can use it as a fuel source. Now, all that has to do with diabetes mellitus, which is the main topic of this video. When we talk about diabetes mellitus, there's actually three different types of diabetes. That's it. Three. Type 1 diabetes, which is much more prevalent in dogs than it is in cats, happens because the body is not producing enough insulin to maintain a normal and healthy level of a blood sugar. In type 2 diabetes, the pancreas actually is producing enough insulin. However, it's either just having a hard time releasing that insulin into the bloodstream. Let it go. Let it and or the body has become insulin resistant, meaning the insulin that is released just isn't working as well as it should. And even though there's a couple different causes of this, the most common one is from chronically overeating. Um, nom, 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 oh, nom. Type 3 diabetes is what we call gestational diabetes, and this happens because an overproduction of hormones during pregnancy lead to insulin resistance. So this is really only a problem in pregnant queens and bitches. Look, I know I could have said female dogs and cats, but I paid a lot of money to be able to say bitch professionally, so I'm gonna hit it every chance I get. Assuming the pet did not go into a diabetic crisis, testing for diabetes is actually really straightforward. We find that their blood sugar is really high on a blood panel. We may also recommend what's called a fructosamine test, and we will usually also do a urine sample to look for glucose in the urine and signs of a UTI. There are four clinical signs of diabetes, and these are extremely important for every pet owner to know. They're increased drinking, increase urination, increase eating, and weight loss. When we talk about treating diabetes, it's fairly similar to how they do in people, and that's with daily insulin injections and diet change. Now, there are some newer things coming out in terms of treating diabetes. Well, there's your basic overview of diabetes, and hopefully this video made you guys hungry for some more information, and if it did, be on the lookout for the next video in the series.